What is going on guys? Welcome back to part two of the Datsun 280ZX Haltech 550 install video. So in part one, we got it all wired up and then we blew the ECU up, kind of. So we basically blew the, uh, the igniter driver, ignition driver. We blew the ignition driver on our Haltech 550 because we wired up a coil that didn't have an internal igniter. That was a rookie mistake. But luckily it wasn't a too massive of a mistake. Haltech were absolutely amazing with the process. I express posted the ECU back to them. They literally fixed it in like two days and had it back on my doorstep so fast. It's ridiculous. But I've been moving house this week, which sucks by the way. Moving house is the worst. You literally figure out how much crap you have when you have to move house. Um, but yeah, Tara and I are in a new house now, so I'm pretty stoked about that. And now finally I've had time to come back here with my good man, Kwana. What up? And we, we're actually going to try and fire this thing up today. I'm super pumped, so massive shout out to Haltech for getting that sorted. It was $220, so not the worst uh, thing in the world. And now my Haltech 550 is perfect again, which I'm really happy about because it's my first ever brand new ECU that I've ever bought, so I kind of was gutted that we made that mistake, but it is what it is. So now Quan is just going over the map, making sure that it's all good um, and that we haven't got any settings in the ECU mucked up before we go ahead and put the power on and turn it on. And then what we'll do is we'll go back to plugging our LS coil in with our spark plug here. We'll spin the dizzy once again, confirm that we have spark, and then we'll do the rotor phasing on the motor, which we'll kind of go through while we do it. Make sure it's all timed up perfectly and then, I think we can turn the key, which is crazy. Oh, I'm so pumped. So this video today is gonna to be more about, uh, this is pretty much gonna be us starting the car. To get it started, we don't have to do a whole lot. So I'm pretty pumped. So yeah, let's see how we go. All right, we're testing for Spark. We've literally like just plugged it in. We spent like 10 hours probably trying to get Spark last time. A little while. <laughs> Before realizing that the inter like there was something wrong internally with the ECU because we went over literally every single thing And now all we've done is plug the ECU in check the settings and give it a spin We have spark and like nice spark too dude That's crazy That is like that is a massive moment honestly we spent night after night trying to get that to happen that right there, and it was so simple once we actually had the ECU doing what it was supposed to be doing and not being broken. Yes! Sir! Now we have fuel, now we have spark. We just have to make all the mathematics in the motor work, and then we can turn the key and actually have it hopefully run. Oh, I'm so pumped. And pull this off because I want to see the turbo go like, woo! All right, so rotor phasing. Haltech do a video on rotor phasing, so, and it's like an amazing video, so there's not a lot of point on me kind of trying to explain it to you guys when I hardly kind of understand it myself but we've set the timing on the crank pulley to 15 degrees before, before zero yeah before top dead center before top dead center 15 degrees before top dead center on the crank pulley and then we have this bad boy here pointing at number one we, and then we kind of set timing here as well I don't even understand it fully to be honest but it basically allows the ECU to uh, have a window where it can advance and retard timing uh, in the right way while we're on boost. But if you set it wrong, then it can't advance and retard timing in the right play. Uh, advance and retard timing, but it'll be to, at a point where it'll be putting it after top dead center, so it'll be firing too late. Yeah, that's right. So we need it pre. Yeah, it's all before. Oh man, it's very confusing. But hopefully we've got it right to the point where we can start the car at least. So now we put the cap on make sure it's pointing to number one. Oh yeah so yeah it's pointing towards number one which is right here this guy it's pretty close and then he's just rotating the dizzy oh, be dark. and then you got a call from Dr. Drift so we have some rotation in the dizzy with the stock set, uh, timing setting where we can make sure that it's directly pointing towards the number one on the cap and then we lock it out don't we yep all right, and then we put all the spark leads on and we turn the key. We're gonna make sure we have the firing order right on the cap for the spark plug leads. And then we turn the car on. I don't know about you guys, but I am seriously excited. It's not gonna run well because it's literally just a stock map that comes in the ECU, base map. But, but it's, it's enough for it to run. Yeah, enough for it to run. And we don't have a throttle cable, so we'll just control the throttle by the throttle body. Okay, 
Okie dokie, the time has come for the first start. Dr. Drift is on the phone because he really wants to hear it start. Yeah. We have our leads in the right firing order. Now for all you wizards in the comment section, we are going to obviously tidy it up and have all the heats leaving. So <laughs> this is all pre rehearsed so that we're going to have this all tidied up so that this, these leads aren't touching any exhaust stuff. So don't you worry about that. But for now, we're just trying to get this thing started. Good? Yeah. Oh, am I turning the key? Yeah. I'm scared. All right. Please don't explode. Here we go. All right. Bit of power. All right, good? Yep. <gasps> flat battery. The, the battery's flat. All right. Take two in two seconds. All right, Klein is rigging up the battery things. Let's see if we can have a take two on this thing. Whether it'll let us. Ready? No. Nah. She's too dead. All right, take three. Navarro, let's go. We've got diesel power now. Come on. All right, take 47. Here we go. Come on, buddy. Got fuel, you can hear it. Alright, so that is awesome. Step one, it freaking runs. Which is, and it sounds so, I mean, like it's pulsing at the moment because we haven't got something like quite right. Um, but we're about to check the timing. But that turbo sounds so good. Alright, next up, check timing. Make sure our settings in the ECU are right. We've got to uh, muck around with the timing angle a little bit as well. And then we should be able to get it kind of running a bit smoother, but it is freaking running. So I get the lovely job of just sitting in the car and turning the key, which is so good. We are getting the car running bit by bit a little bit better uh, by tweaking a couple of things within the ECU. So uh, Klein is now turning the idle down a bit up there manually. I'm just sitting here waiting for him to tell me to turn the key. Look at these spider webs. We literally like were in, were in this car last week. This is one very productive spider. Ready? has currently got the timing light and he is checking the timing and making sure that you can see the little flash thing on the, the crank. It. Start it? Yeah. Oh Nee, what happened to our timing light? So I've been mucking around with some stuff a little bit more and each little thing we do, it sounds better. But we G'd up, we were just going to get it running and call it a day, but you know, it just never happens like that. We G'd up, we put the water hoses on and we put water in the car so that we can continue to get this thing running super smooth. Ignore the smoke coming up from uh, under the inlet manifold. That's where the exhaust manifold is and we painted it nice and black. So that's just the paint setting in. But everything else seems pretty good. We haven't had any issues. We're just literally dialing in this timing. So now the car's got water, we can make, you know, we can be happy that A, the coolant temperature sensor is working in the Haltech and B, the engine's going to stay cool while we're running it because we're running it for long periods of time now. So uh, I think we're ready to try again. Here we go. Oh, better. Off. That's that's better. On with the key. Yeah, she's idling high now. So we turned the idle up a lot before because it wouldn't idle super well. And now that it's idling well, we can turn the idle back down, obviously. Rocket science, guys. Not at all. But it's good. And I'll show you guys how the exhaust sounds once we get this thing idling properly. Quite, I can give it a rev. It sounds so good, though. Like, the exhaust sounds so deep and nice and six cylinder ish and just it's very quiet which i'm freaking stoked about because i hate loud droney exhausts i just like nice turbo noises but uh good all right here we go come on buddy Give it a rev, Kleiner. He gets the uh, 
You're kidding. That sounds insane. What? How good's that? Yes! That sounds so good. Oh man. Good turbo. <laughs> Alrighty, that is it guys. The car freaking runs and runs really nicely as well. I uh, forgot how good this engine sounds. There's no noises up top or in the, in the motor whatsoever, which is super awesome. It's so smooth. The T51R mod on our Pulsar Turbo sounds insane. I'm freaking pumped. But a huge thanks to this guy, Kwana, you're a legend. Honestly, without Kwano, I wouldn't have got this going. His expertise is far beyond mine, and that's why this car freaking just runs now. So, stoked. Next thing is to pretty much finish up some wiring, which we're going to do off screen because you guys don't need to see that. We'll finish up the wiring. I'm going to order some new leads. I need to put a GK Tech uh, clutch master as well as the R33 clutch line and a brand new slave on the car. Uh, I need to put throttle cable on it. And that way the car is going to be going and then hopefully maybe next week or the week after we're going to take it to dr drift and we're going to tune it which is exciting as hell so uh the haltech elite 550 is officially installed on the datsun and running uh so freaking pumped man again massive shout out to haltech they're insane with their customer service if you're thinking about, about buying one I highly recommend it uh in terms of how hard the job is out of 10 i would say 11 so don't underestimate how hard wiring an ECU is into your car. Just with, it's just the little things, really. So uh, if you're going to do it, get a friend like Kwana to help you or pay someone, which is what you probably should do. But I am paying him, all right? I'm giving him a set of wheels for all of his help. Um, even though I literally just messaged him one day and was like, hey, man, I'm just doing this. If you want to come down and hang out, that'd be cool. He come down and he just took the reins and actually, you know, did the whole job. And I pretty much just sat there watching the cricket and doing things half ass so um you know it is what it is but i'm just a very lucky person that i have good friends so uh thank you guys for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it the datsun's alive i'm freaking pumped next video we're heading to vic drift round one with the e36 look at this thing man it's looking pretty as hell i'll give you guys a quick update so we've got the flares on it it's looking freaking sick we've got the t37 18 inch wheels on the back t37 17s on the front Look how good this thing looks, man. So we're heading to Victor for round one this weekend. You guys will see that on the vlog. Uh, fingers crossed that we can pull an awesome result. But uh, until then, thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you feel like it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao. Bye. Peace.